I don't know how to do this list without being offensive. Bloop boop boop. Bloop doop doop. Bloop doop doop. I don't like happy pride these days. It doesn't feel right. Hmm. Resilient pride, everyone. Be proud for being resilient. Brumine and Michael here, and we are going to give you our yearly pride video. Today, we are doing another tier list. A list of the things that make us teary. We are going to talk about the protagonists of various Final Fantasy games and try and figure out if they would be, if they were real people, tops, bottoms, verse, side, or asexual. So let's start with, I think maybe the hardest one, Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy 1. Honestly, I was thinking about this a moment ago in the shower. It's been a long time since I played this game. I'm trying to remember, in the gameplay system, is it like five where you can pick his job? At the very beginning of the game, you pick the four characters' jobs out of like the six or seven of them. And there's a point like two thirds of the way through the game where they all level up a job. Right. So it's me, not really that... like a job system. It's more like a D&D character. To me, that makes him verse because mm. he can kind of do what you want him to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Though the Warrior of Light is not a paladin, he gives paladin vibes in such a way that makes me think that he is actively choosing to not have sexual interest, which doesn't necessarily make him asexual. It just means that he's a man of the cloth or whatever. Yeah, but he never expresses interest in anybody, really. Yeah, but this is headcanon remain. Yeah, I could go verse or ace, but I'm fine with verse. Okay, next we've got Furion from Final Fantasy II, who still has a better name than Cloud. I don't really have strong feelings about Furion either. He does have a little bit of a character, but it's more just like determined to help the rebellion at any costs. The characters in Final Fantasy II who have strong characteristics are all of the temporary party members. I've never played Final Fantasy II, so this one's all you. I think eager and determined is making me think first again. Now for Final Fantasy IV, I have split Cecil into Dark Knight Cecil and Paladin Cecil. Dark Knight Cecil, what do you think? Honestly, I think bottom. Because he kind of submits to whatever his higher-ups tell him to do. Mm. He doesn't really question anything until, like, something catastrophic happens where he kind of can't not question it anymore. I disagree slightly and when he's questioning, because from the very first scene in his bedroom when Rosa visits him and he's in bed in full armor, he is already at that point questioning and thinking about whether he's doing the right thing or not. So I don't know if he's like just blindly following. I think before we have our first time that we can control him as a character, then yes, he is blindly following, but it's what happens at the very beginning of the game, the inciting incident that makes him question. I can't remember if he questions it once Rosa points out the problems or like immediately he's like, mm. I can't remember. If I remember correctly, he questions it and she's like, don't worry about it too much. <laughs> I still love you either way. Uh, well, what do you think? I just said I don't know. I have something yeah. in mind for another character later, but it could also fit this version of this character where he is actually Verz, but because of Mask Musk, thinks he has to be a total top. Well, but is being the top about being masculine? No, it's, and I don't mean to equate that, but I think he would because he is bought into tech, toxic masculinity and the game, the first half of the game is him trying to come out of that, basically. I guess I could see Top. I didn't say that's what he actually is. I, th I said that's what he thinks he is. Like, he might want to do other things, but society has told him that he's a man, so he must only Top. We can split the difference and say verse. As we go on, just know, people of any sexual preference, we love you. And we celebrate any way you want to show your sexuality or not. But then we get to Paladin Cecil, who gives me such soft boy energy. Like if you think about his menu sprite, his, his portrait in the menu, he looks like the pretty, still a boy, but has feminine aspects in the way that a lot of JRPG protagonists do to be like as widely appealing as possible. Yeah, and you could also say that being a paladin is all about like, serving people, like the community and people in, in danger. So I could see bottom. Now we've got Bart's. When we did our review of Final Fantasy V, 
and we talked about Bart's character, we realized that he doesn't really have one. He's kind of the silent protagonist who has dialogue. But one thing that I remember noting in that was that the one time that Gallif tries to open up to him, Bart shuts him down immediately. He's like, no, we don't talk about feelings here. So that again, is giving me like repressed, not doing what he really wants to do vibes. To me, he's ace, not because of that, but just because like, he's one of those characters who never really expresses romantic interest in anybody. This is kind of the only Final Fantasy game I can think of that has, as far as I can remember, no romantic ending for a character whatsoever. Final Fantasy 1 doesn't, but I also want to make the distinction between asexual and aromantic because they're not the same thing and someone can be asexual and not aromantic or vice versa. That's true, but to me, he's both. He's both asexual and romantic. It sort of feels like he only wants friends. One thing that I want to push back, when Bartz and Gallif see Ferris in bed before they know that she's a woman, they both oh, yeah. walk away with like googly eyes, like, oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, or yeah. so beautiful, they don't gender the character then. Oh yeah. Appreciating beauty is not necessarily having sexual desire. Yeah, but googly eyes isn't necessarily appreciating beauty. If I remember, it was kind of like, a played for laughs, goofy, peeping Tom moment. Yeah. My final answer for Bart's is asexual or side. I'm feeling more asexual than side. Okay, Tara, what do you think? It's interesting because she's, it's not that she doesn't have agency, but she's kind of just one of those char female characters that stuff keeps happening to. To me, there's a kind of passiveness in her that isn't in a female character like Celeste, for instance. Right. So my first instinct is bottom. But she also has so much growth in the game that it's kind of hard to pigeonhole her. Her character arc is sort of based on two things, to know herself and to know how to love others. In figuring those out, she develops her agency. The choices she makes are to be a surrogate mother for the children in Mobley's. And then she chooses to rejoin the party to defend those children. Though that has nothing to do with sexuality. But she is questioning throughout the game. When Edgar flirts with her, she realizes that most girls would be flattered by that, but she's not most girls. On the ship to Thamasa, she pulls General Leo aside and asks him what it's like to know love. She also asks Shadow, and they basically just tell her, like, you have to find this within yourself. I think she might actually be a good case for Ace, but not Arrow, or maybe both. She has a lot of love in her, but I don't necessarily see it as romantic or sexual love. I can see that. Then we get to Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Now this is the character for whom I developed the idea of someone who is so stuck in toxic masculinity that he thinks he has to be a strict top, but is probably not. To me, Cloud's a bottom. <laughs> like the way he so desperately wants to emulate Sephiroth which really, I mean, this is going to be major spoilers, but if you consider who he is before the game proper in Crisis Core Final Fantasy time period, right? And not talking about that game, but that time period. If you consider that his most authentic self, because it was before he was traumatized, that's like, to me, super bottom. Really wants to be like Sephiroth, just goes with the crowd, wants to do anything to please his supervisors so he can get that rank. Yeah, he's sort of like eager puppy dog of a character. He latches onto others too, like Zack. Okay, I, I like that. I like Cloud is the bottom, you heard her here first. Tifa must be into pegging, good for her. Now we're moving on to Ramza from Final Fantasy Tactics. What are your thoughts? It's been a long time since I played this game, but to me, from what I remember, Ramza is a top because he takes more initiative than like Cloud does, for example, in wanting to directly change his world and isn't afraid to go against the grain, isn't afraid to possibly lose that rank in the name of what he considers is right. Unlike Cloud, who really wants to emulate the men around him, Ramza often butts heads with the other male characters in the game, not even necessarily with the evil ones. I agree with you. I do also want to say that those are traits that are not None of these, no traits are actually attributable to any of these, but we're going with stereotypes here, basically. Okay, another one that I think is actually pretty difficult, Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. I don't think he's ace, and I don't think he's a bottom. I think he wants to be left alone, but he. I think he does have, hmm, does he have real feelings for Ainoa? 
or not? Or is it just like she has impressed herself upon him? I don't mean to sound like that, like I'm making her out to be a bad character because she's not. I think she's actually one of the better characters in the game. I think Squall's a bratty bottom. There, I said it. I said it. <laughs> he doesn't want to do any of the work. He wants you to do all the work. He wants you to put all the emotional investment in while he just lays there and lets you do it to him. He's a bratty bottom. I think you're right. Yeah, you, you've sold me. Zidane from Final Fantasy IX is a perv, and I think probably will take it any way you can get it. I first for the same reason. Titus, I will not say Titus from Final Fantasy X. What do you think? Did you know that some people say Zidane? I've heard Zidane, like the soccer player. I've not heard Zidane. Um, I've heard Zidane, I've heard Zidane. With any of these pre-Final Fantasy X other than Titus, all bets are off. Cecil versus Cecil. So I definitely don't think Titus is asexual because that Makalania wood scene is, we all know what they did. <laughs> also, uh, the very beginning of the game, when he's before the Blitzball game, when he's talking to the fans and the two like hot girls are there. And he's like, when I do this, you'll know that's for you or whatever his gesture is. And he's like, where are you sitting? And like, he's obviously really flirting with them hard, which again, could just be like part of a play uh, to beef up his like star power. But I think it's legitimate for him. He does not give me top energy. The obsessive compulsive part of me wants to put him inside just because we don't have anyone there yet. <laughs> not ace, not top. I'm narrowing down here. I also think not bottom. I think versor side, which are the two harder ones typically because they don't have as much baggage behind them in stereotypes. I'm feeling more verse than side, but I'm willing to reevaluate that when we're done. Then we've got Yuna from Final Fantasy X-2. So this one's interesting because I think if we were talking about 10 Yuna, I would say bottom. It's funny because she's not objectified in the way that women usually are objectified. Is just kind of in her character to like people please and do whatever she needs to do. But in this game, I would say Yuna's a top. She takes much more leadership and takes much more initiative. She's not afraid to say no to people. Yeah, I agree with that. And I was thinking the same thing before you started. Well, then we've got the real main character of Final Fantasy XII, Ash. Ash is a top. Yeah, Ash is a top. This one's all you, Ramin. Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. So I think most people would call Lightning a top, and she's definitely not a bottom, but I think there's also a good argument for Ace because she's the only character who's in all three of the Final Fantasy XIII games, the first one, the tr then the two sequels, and not in a single one is she ever like flirty or sexual with anybody. But that's the case with many of these, so I think we need to take headcanon into effect here. Um, okay, maybe not many, but I don't want to say that she's ace just because she doesn't show her desires in the game. Because that's basically what we did for Bart's and Terra, although I think we have a better case for Terra being ace. I would normally agree with you, but with this many hours of game at our disposal to judge her upon, I feel like that provides us with too much evidence to not put her there. And it's also not just a lack of interest, but she's so solely focused on her goals in each game, like of defeating the big bad or whatever. And honestly, by the third game, and this is spoilers for people who want to play the third game, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to, by the third game, she is a tool of the goddess. She's basically an angel warrior at that point. Like she ain't got time. And this is kind of a critique I have of her character as a whole is that in trying to make her the female cloud, what the game devs really meant was they were making her the female version of what fans think Cloud is. Many fans, not all fans. Like this power fantasy, like war fantasy hero. And I mean, she has other character traits besides that, but she's still not really what I would call the best written character in the franchise. There are many kind of holes in her writing, especially again, when you consider how many games she's in. But having said that, because she's so single-minded, it's really hard to put her in any kind of sexual role. Okay, you've sold me. Final Fantasy XV Noctis. I've only played like 10 minutes of this game. I've yeah. watched all of the cutscenes on YouTube. <laughs> I think he's a fuckboy. A little bit. Here's what it is. I think he's a top, but I think he's bad at it. <laughs> what do you think? I think of more, him more as bottom, really, because the other 
characters in the party are constantly like protecting him and to some degree that's just because he's the prince and they're the escorts and that's how those jobs work but he's also again a little bit of a bratty bottom like kind of whiny kind of needy but i also could see him being the douchebag prince who rolls up to any like noble woman about his age and tries to get her in bed with him. He doesn't really do that though. No, like, but before the game starts, I could see that being the case. That makes sense to me for his character to do that, even though he's betrothed to Luna Freya. Maybe, I mean, I haven't watched any of the media that is set before the game. Um, I haven't either, but that's what headcanon is. You make it up. I don't know, in, in my headcanon, he's the bottom of the, of the team. Him or Prompto. Yeah. But he could also be Verse. Maybe we compromise between our two views and say Verse. Okay. I like that. Okay, last one. What's his name? I don't know. <laughs> it starts with a C. Not Cecil, not Cloud. Clive. Clive from Final Fantasy 16. Have you watched any story spoilers for this game or anything? No. He does canonically have sex in the game with Jill, the female main character. I think he's a top. All the trailers definitely give top vibes. It's all <laughs> I've seen and or played, so I'm not gonna argue with you. And I, I think the creators want you to think of him as like Cloud 2.0 in the way that the audience sees Cloud, or too many of the audience, not all. Okay, so is there anyone that we want to rethink here? I think we can get rid of the side tier. Yeah, sides, we love you, we know you exist but none of these characters feel like sides to us. Tell us in the comments if you think otherwise. I think it makes sense how many verse there are, given sort of the nature of what a protagonist is meant to be in most RPGs, <laughs> like malleable, relatable. I do like that our top tier is equal parts male and female. I sort of saw that coming. And although we don't have many bottoms, the bottoms we do have, I think are maybe unexpected to the average fan. Make some insecure straight guys uncomfortable, but no, straight guys can be bottoms too. And that's what we are all about here on this channel is making insecure straight guys uncomfortable. Anyway, I think that's about it. So let's stop sharing. Friday half. Yeah, already have. And that should be about it. So if you like this video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, please give it a like anyway, a pity like, if you will. If you have any thoughts on any of this, let us know in the comments. I would love to debate this with you because I'm sure people have opinions and I'd love to read them. I'll just be nice about it. To this side of Ramin is a video that YouTube thinks you might like, so check that out. Up there in that corner is the link to our channel. We put out reviews, ramblings, musings, rankings, and so on about media, mostly video games and music. So if you're interested in any of that, please subscribe. And that should be about it. Maintain your groovy selves.